Hi, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to update the firmware to the IBM or Lenovo 46M0997 SAS expander card. So this SAS expander card is really useful when you're building a storage server and you want more ports without having to add more controllers. It was originally designed for IBM X servers uh, or Lenovo, which they kind of sell very similar machines now. Um, anyway, you can find this for f relatively cheap on eBay these days, but one of the problems is that the default firmware on it, which is 510A, uh, does not work very well. You'll find that oftentimes hard drives will not show up on uh, the, the, some of the connections. And the reason is that there's some bugs uh, in the firmware of this card. So if you're buying this card, first of all, make sure you ask about what firmware uh, it has. And uh, hopefully if you can find a seller who has the latest firmware, which I'm going to show you how to apply today, um, you'll be set and good to go. But if you happen to get one of these cards with the older firmware and it's not working for you, you'll probably need to update the firmware to get it to work. Now the problem is uh, the firmware update's not exactly straightforward because the these cards originally were designed for IBM servers. So if you go download the firmware update package from IBM's website, which I will show you in a little bit here, um, the update package just uh, won't work outside of a uh, non-IBM uh, X server. So anyway, this is the uh, you know, some pictures of Google image search of, of this particular SAS expander. The, the part number you want to know here is 46M0997. So that's what you'll search for if you're looking for this on eBay or anywhere else. So first, let me just show you how to download the firmware package because IBM's website, unfortunately, is not the most intuitive and obvious to use and navigate through. So I'm going to help you through that a little bit. Just go to IBM.com at first and go to support. And you'll come down and, and click on fixes, updates, and drivers. So, so far, so good. What gets confusing is at some point you're going to have to select a product. Now, if you don't know what product this particular card came with, well, then, you know, you'll, you'll be spending a lot of time looking for this. So this is where I'm going to try to help you uh, navigate through this. The IBM obviously makes a lot of different products, but you want to go down to near the bottom here, System X. Those are the IBM servers. And you're going to want to pick the model of server um, that is X3650 Model 3, M3. All right, so this is um, very important here that you, you pick this one. There may be other models of servers that um, have this SAS expander as an option, but I know for sure this one um, had that. And I just leave the, the system number uh, 7945 at the uh, default. And operating system, well, I think you can pretty much pick anything you want here, but um, since I'm working on a Linux system today, I'm going to pick Red Hat Linux 6. That's a little bit old, but it doesn't really matter. So we'll go ahead, go ahead and click continue there. Now, you would think that, you know, after selecting all those things, you would get a, uh, a meaningful list of things, but unfortunately you don't. You can see this is this long, 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 very long page of probably over 100 items to look through, so that's not very helpful. Um, so what you want to do here is go uh, and filter this result a little bit more. Go ahead and pick SAS right here. And then we'll narrow down the search results. And the stuff at the front uh, top here uh, under critical updates is, forget about that, keep scrolling. And come down to where under the SAS category, you will see IBM 6 gigabit PCIe SAS expander daughter card firmware update, 2016, September 13. Or sorry, yeah, 2016, September 13th. And you'll see specifically the the firmware number right here, SAS-634A. This is the file that you want. This is the latest firmware that's available for that SAS expander. 
So you can go ahead and click on that. And of course, you'll have to create a login and uh, sign in with that in order to do the download. I won't go through that step because I think that's fairly uh, simple and you can, it doesn't uh, cost you anything to create an account, you just need an email address, I think. So anyway, that's how you get to the firmware. All right, anyway. All right, and so once you get the firmware downloaded, let me show you what that looks like. So the, the, the firmware file that you're gonna download is this one. And it's a dot bin, so it's meant to be an executable. And, and I also downloaded like the, the change log and the readme file and stuff like that. But you don't really need any of this. All you really need is the dot bin file. And if you run, if you follow the IBM instructions and run this the way they um, describe it or instruct you to do, you run it with a dash S and what you'll get is this message that says, this this update is not meant for this system. And that's because I'm running on a CentOS um, server here. That's a CentOS 7.5, but this is not an IBM server. And so these uh, update packages are really meant just to run on an, an IBM server. And so uh, it's doing that check and it's telling you, hey, you're not an I on an IBM server. You shouldn't be running this. But uh, there's a way around it. So this bin file actually is just a self-contained executable that also includes a archive of all the files that you need, including the actual firmware file. And so all you have to do is extract that. So I created a temp directory and I'm just gonna go ahead and unzip this file. And it'll complain about, you know, some stuff that's not part of the zip archive and whatnot. Um, you know, so it'll say, well, warning, hey, there was, you know, this so many extra bytes in this zip file that it didn't process. But anyway, went ahead and whatever it could uh, unzip, it did. And the critical file here is this, under the images files DL 634A-RD2. This is the actual firmware file that you're, you're going to need. Now, before we start uh, applying the firmware, you're going to need some tools uh, to enable you to do this. And one of them, uh, the, the critical tool is this uh, program called SG Write Buffer. And on CentOS, this is part here. Let's, let me just show you exactly. So on CentOS, this is part of the SG3 underscore utils package. Now, if you just install this uh, from the default CentOS repositories, unfortunately, you're going to get a version that's a little bit too old and won't work. I've actually tried it and failed to update the firmware. And so uh, I really mean it when, you, when I say that you need to get the latest package for this SG3 uh, underscore utils. And the way you find that is Go ahead and do a, Google, do a Google search for SG3 underscore utils, and the first link that pops up is the uh, the package uh, originator. And so click on that. This is the, the project's website. And go ahead and click on download and build. And you'll see that very conveniently, this project has actually created a bunch of packages that are available for download already. And I, I went ahead and just picked the latest. You don't necessarily need the latest and greatest to make this firmware update work. But you know, if you're going to be installing the newer version anyway, why not go with the latest, right? And so for CentOS, I simply used these two RPM packages here. If you're running Debian or a Debian-based um, Linux uh, distro, you can use the Debian packages instead, right? And if worst case, none of these work for you, the source packages are here, so you can just compile it. So in my case, I just went ahead and downloaded these uh, packages here and updated my system with those packages. And so you'll see that reflected here in the SG3 utils, it's .144, which is the package I downloaded. If you, trust, if you just try to install from the default uh, RPM repos of CentOS 7.5, you will not find version 1.44 here. And actually, more importantly, it's the version of SG write buffer that you're, you're concerned about. With SGUtils 
you get, um, let me just type it for you, you get SG write buffer 1.12 or 1.28. And the critical version that you need is 1.15. So anyway, a uh, long about way to get here, but um, it is actually important that you have the proper version of this utility. Uh, otherwise this firmware update will not work. And so make sure you get that installed. And so now that we have that installed, uh, let's go ahead and go to the to the firmware file. So this is the DL6348.rd2, uh, which is the firmware file that we need. And let me also show you that we have this expander in this machine right now. So you'll see that this uh, right here, this SCSI device, um, has currently firmware 602A. And so we're going to update it to the 634A. Uh, and sometimes you'll, you'll find this, um, the earliest version of firmware for this card is 510A. And so you might find one that has that version instead. Uh, either way, there have been a lot of fixes. I've found that the, the expanders with the older firmware have a lot of reliability problems. Um, Maybe it's it's specific to using non uh, IBM equipment, but um, whenever I've used this expander in, like, say, a super micro server or some other server, um, I often have problems where certain hard drives won't show up. And initially, I'll think, oh, maybe there's something wrong with the expander, but it's actually that there was just a bug in the expander. So anyway, we're going to update this today uh, from 602A to 634A. And we're going to do this on a non IBM system. And so the way to do that, so long as you now you, that you have the file and that you have the SG um, write buffer utility, the right version of that, is you're going to run the command. Oh, well, first of all, one more thing. We need to actually figure out uh, what SCSI device this expander is. And in Linux, this is fairly simple. You run LS SCSI with the dash G and you'll see it'll add this uh, extra column here. And it's telling us that for, uh, this device is um, dev sg2. And so this is actually really important. We want to make sure that we run these commands on dev sg2, which is the expander, and not anything else here. So just uh, take care to note that. And so the way to update the firmware is we, we're going to run this command buffer, and we're going to set the mode to dmc underscore offs defer. And we're going to run it with the option uh, dash dash BPW equals 49, uh, 4096 dash dash in. And then let's give it the uh, firmware file name. All right. And then we run it on dev SG2. I almost typed the wrong thing there. Um, so you want to make sure you run it on dev SG2. That is for this SAS expander. Now in your system, if you have other devices and whatnot, this might not be SG2. And that's why it's really important that you run this command, lsscsi-g, to figure out what this is. It might be SG1, it might be SG0, but in my case, because I've got this other, other devices here that came before it, this is showing up as dev SG2. So you want to make sure you figure that out and, and double check that this is actually the right one because you don't want to be running this command on anything else but um, that actual SAS expander. All right, so I'm fairly confident that's the right command. Let's go ahead and run this. It takes a few seconds here, but not too long. All right, so the command is done, and we got to run one more thing. SG write buffer mode. Okay, we're going to say activate microcode, and again, run it on dev SG2 or whatever um, device uh, file your SAS expander is showing up as. All right, and this that command is actually very very quick. All right, so then the next thing is we're going to reboot the machine. All right. Oh, 
while that machine is rebooting, I'm just gonna ping it until I see it come back up. All right, looks like the machine's back online. Let's see if we can log in. All right, we're back up. So, yep. And if we run LS SCSI now, let me clear the screen. And there you go. Now we're on version 634A. And dash G, yep, so it's still dev SG2. So that's how you update the firmware of this IBM SAS expander on a non-IBM system. All right, so hopefully that helps you guys out. All right, bye-bye.